this is a focus leader. Do we hear movies look like this? Do we hear soundtracks sound like this? Or like this? If so, you need this. A focus leader. First, set your lens so that these lines are sharp and clear on all parts of the screen. Now, set the volume control on your projector. The sound level should be adjusted until my voice can be clearly understood in all sections of the room. You are now ready to participate in another Pan American Travel Adventure. Mr. Layton, Mr. Jensen is calling from Copenhagen. Oh, put him on. Good morning, Carl. What's the good... What? I don't believe it. But those engines went out of here three weeks ago. I know, Carl, I know. I realize you have a deadline. What can I say, Carl? It should be there. You're right. I'm not giving you double talk. Your order left here over three weeks ago. I'll get on it right away myself. Yes. Thanks, Carl. Miss Evans, get me Hal Phillips over at traffic right away. VP of a front-running outfit. Not the biggest line of generators, but big enough. Stockholders and the board of directors looking over your shoulder. The biggest chance for expansion in the company's history. From Copenhagen to Kyoto. While there are new buyers in Lebanon, they may do their buying in Brussels or Berlin. Your job? to keep Tolleson Electric on top, all over the map. Sometimes you find yourself wishing you were on some remote part of the globe, where people still live as they did in the past, in the era of small business, very small. Marketing was a simple process in those days. You stacked your goods in a central location and hollered, Come and get it. Business was on a highly personal basis. Customers came from miles around, as they still do in many parts of the world today. The market was the nub, the magnet, to which everybody was drawn. If you could build a better mousetrap, the little world you lived in would beat a path to your door. And then someone discovered that his wares could be sold in other places, if he could only find a way to get them there. So he did. There were untapped markets at other points along the river. on the opposite side of the jungle, across the desert. This was considered a high-powered operation until somebody found a way to carry bigger loads, faster. The wheel that broke the camel's back did the same thing to the merchants who kept relying on the camel. The fellow who stayed with the old way of marketing went down with it. Mm -hmm. 
Somehow you've got a feeling that a lot of your trouble starts right here, with situations you can't control. Like this one. And this. Pilferage. A fortune every year. And on the waterfront, it's never been licked. It's insured, all right. But the time you lose and the goodwill, they're gone forever. Warehouses can help, but they can also swallow up your profits. Remember the last time you talked about air cargo with Fred Sheffield, your export manager, and Hal Phillips, head of traffic. Fred just wasn't having any. Okay for emergencies, he said, but too expensive. Phillips gave him an argument. Cutting costs wasn't enough. We had to go after more sales. And air might be just the way. You remember a lot of talk about freight rates and air capacity, but not much in the way of fact. And right now, facts are what you need. I'm going on now, Miss Evans. Probably for the rest of the day. Have them get my car, will you please? So, half an hour later, you're traveling an unfamiliar road. The first thing you notice about the cargo terminal is its size. This is no telephone booth operation. It ranges over every important city on the globe, shipping every imaginable type of cargo. organization enables them to clear out and restock the whole place every few hours. This kind of efficient handling ought to make a difference in insurance rates. You check your hunch with a man who's been filling you in on operations at the terminal. The Pan Am cargo service manager. You're right, Mr. Layton. Your insurance costs by air are one-fourth as much as by surface. And here's one of the reasons why. Because the shipments are in our possession at all times under our direct control. As Sherman warms up, you realize he's not just talking about shipping techniques, but what may be a whole revolution in marketing. From a plant in Los Angeles, 12 hours by surface to Tucson, Arizona. By jet, in 15 hours, your goods are in Tokyo or across the pole in Paris. And an eastbound shipment from Tokyo can reach San Francisco 
two hours earlier than its departure time. It's a new kind of marketing, bound only by the clock. You're wrestling with some startling ideas, a totally different kind of traffic world. The whole notion of separate treatment for domestic and foreign markets. Maybe that doesn't make sense anymore. sort of ran away with me. Time plaguing us from Durban to Denmark. You keep looking at your watch, but you're seeing something else. The greatest air cargo capacity in the world. Getting greater, faster, and spreading all the time. You know, it's funny to think about, but right this minute, the Pan Am cargo planes actually in the air make up a flying pipeline completely around the globe. On key routes covered by surface transport only once in three or four weeks, Pan Am has continuous service over the entire network. Big enough to carry our traffic? Sure. But what about the cost? Which brings us to this meeting with Kingsley from cargo sales at Pan Am. Well, frankly, as I've said, gentlemen, there's no absolute rule about air cost versus surface. It depends on what you're shipping and where. Now, let's say, for instance, that uh, you import computers. By air, you could have them shipped without crating. No damage and easier handling. Because of the speed of air, you could have these machines working for you, oh, three weeks earlier than by surface. Aren't you loading the dice on that one, Mr. Kingsley? <laughs> oh, sure I am. But I wanted to show you one extreme. Suppose you wanted to move a big supply of wheat, seaport to seaport. Obviously, you'd use surface. But uh, that's not so typical either. Right. Most cargoes are going to fall into a gray area in between, and all kinds of things come into play. Well, let's take a typical shipment of yours and see how it stacks up dollar for dollar. Mr. Sheffield can give us the figures for surface, and I'll try to fill in for air. Let's make it an order of two dozen Model 78s. Destination New Delhi, Copenhagen. Will you do the honors, Fred? I'll be glad to. Now, let's see. Surface. Air. costs on surface that we've never really totaled. Crating, warehouse, port charges, laterage, and there are a number of other items too. Insurance, damage, brokerage costs. On all of those, air has a definite edge. Enough to cancel out the difference in basic freight charges? Well, it'll be close. Let's see. Five, carry the seven. Don't forget interest charges for time and transit. Uh-uh. Well, there it is. It's surfaced by $186. Pretty small margin. Not when you multiply by the number of shipments we make. 
But look what we'd be gaining in time saved, prestige, and capital turnover. You get a lot more mileage out of your dollar when it's not tied up in, in slow transit. Mr. Kingsley, where's your next weight break? That's a good point. Let's take a look and see. Our savings in volume handling would be passed on to you. At 3,300 pounds or 1,500 kilos drops to 30 cents. Oh, that's still pretty steep compared to surface costs. Well, not to total surface costs. You may fall into a familiar trap there, going by shipping costs alone. Let's not forget lost sales opportunities, markdowns due to obsolescence, contract penalties on late deliveries, and higher inventory levels. That's the only way to figure costs. Hang on, everybody. On our heavier model, the 83, air could be cheaper. Well, that's our biggest. You'd never get it through a plane door. Well, how large is the big one? 611 by 74 by 99. Hmm. Well, you're just four inches too large in the width. Couldn't your assembly be modified in some fashion? Wait a minute. Shipping by air, we could package the panels separately. And air eliminates the case. That would save more than four inches. What's our biggest concern? Breaking into new markets, isn't it? And holding our own on the old ones. All right, now. Why should distribution, our main headache, have to accommodate to design? If we have a better way to distribute, we should adapt our production methods to it. You're talking about changing our whole production line. I'm talking about changing our thinking. We're always bringing out new models anyway. The switches could be worked in gradually. Do we have the overseas volume to warrant that? Maybe not in everything just now. But either we move ahead or we're left behind. Do you remember those automakers in the 20s whose thinking kept them from expanding because there weren't enough highways? Well, somebody built the highways and some other automaker sold his cars. At the moment, maybe air will only be right for certain of your models. But where it is, we're that much ahead. If this works, we'll be converting distribution from an expense item into a marketing weapon. Or is that just a pipe dream? Well, if it is, it's a pipe dream that a lot of big companies are living with. People like U.S. Time, Ampex, Montgomery Ward, Westinghouse, IBM. Westinghouse? Oh, and many others. Now, here's an air distribution plan that we've worked out for a company with extensive Central American markets. Instead of piling up local inventories, they get an estimate of dealer needs for three months and keep the stock in a gateway city. They can stay right on top of market demands fill an order in hours by air. And if somebody makes a wrong guess, they're flexible. The goods can be moved elsewhere fast. Another method is what you might call an aerial assembly line, put together by flights from five different countries. Parts made in uh, Scotland, Germany, Japan, Eastern United States, are fed through Idlewild to the main assembly plant in San Juan. Then the completed items are flown back from Puerto Rico to the company headquarters in Connecticut for distribution. Those boys have really been doing a job. Well, they've been keeping up with the jet age, that's all. It's a question of which century you want to base your marketing on. There's one thing no business and no man can turn his back on. Change. And one change that I suspect is here to stay is air cargo. If it is, I want to be sure that we stay right up there with it. 